Question of Trust by Victor Canning. Everyone thought that Horace Danby was a good, honest citizen. He was about 50 years old and unmarried, and he lived with a housekeeper who worried over his health. In fact, he was usually very well and happy, except for attacks of hay fever in summer. He made locks and was successful enough at his business to have two helpers. Yes, Horace Danby was good and respectable, but not completely honest. Fifteen years ago, Horace had served his first and only sentence in a prison library. He loved rare expensive books, so he robbed a safe every year. Each year, he planned carefully just what he would do, stole enough to last for 12 months and secretly bought the books he loved through an agent. Now, Walking in the bright July sunshine, he felt sure that this year's robbery was going to be as successful as all the others. For two weeks, he had been studying the house at Shotover Grange, looking at its rooms, its electric wiring, its paths and its garden. This afternoon, the two servants, who remained in the Grange while the family was in London, had gone to the movies. Horace saw them go and he felt happy in spite of a little tickle of hay fever in his nose. He came out from behind the garden wall, his tools carefully packed in a bag on his back. There were about 15,000 pounds worth of jewels in the Grange safe. If he sold them one by one, he expected to get at least 5,000, enough to make him happy for another year. There were three very interesting books coming up for sale in the autumn. Now he would get the money he wanted to buy them. He had seen the housekeeper hang the key to the kitchen door on a hook outside. He put on a pair of gloves, took the key and opened the door. He was always careful not to leave any fingerprints. A small dog was lying in the kitchen. It stirred, made a noise and moved its tail in a friendly way. All right, Sherry, Horace said as he passed. All you had to do to keep dogs quiet was to call them by their right names and show them love. The safe was in the drawing room behind a rather poor painting. Horace wondered for a moment whether he should collect pictures instead of books, but they took up too much room. In a small house, books were better. There was a great bowl of flowers on the table and Horace felt his nose tickle. He gave a little sneeze and then put down his bag. He carefully arranged his tools. He had four hours before the servants returned. The safe was not going to be hard to open. After all, he had lived with locks and safes all his life. The burglar alarm was poorly built. He went into the hall to cut its wire. He came back and sneezed loudly as the smell of the flowers came to him again. How foolish people are when they own valuable things, Horace thought. A magazine article had described this house, giving a plan of all the rooms and a picture of this room. The writer had even mentioned that the painting hid a safe. But Horace found that the flowers were hindering him in his work. He buried his face in his handkerchief. Then he heard a voice say from the doorway, What is it? A cold or hay fever? Before he could think, Horace said, Hay fever, and found himself sneezing again. The voice went on, You can cure it with a special treatment, you know, if you find out just what plant gives you the disease. I think you'd better see a doctor if you're serious about your work. I heard you from the top of the house just now. Now, before we read further, let's understand this part of the story in detail. So, in this part of the story, we are introduced to Horace Danby, who is supposedly a good, honest citizen. He was about 50 years old and unmarried. He usually kept good health, except for a few bouts of hay fever in summer. Do you know what hay fever is? 
Well, it's an allergy caused by pollen or dust in which the mucous membranes of the eyes and nose are inflamed, causing running at the nose and watery eyes. Coming back to Horace Danby. Though he was good and respectable, he was not completely honest. Let's go into flashback to know why. About 15 years ago, Horace had served his first and only sentence in a prison library. You see, he loved rare expensive books. And to buy them, he robbed a safe every year. It involved a whole lot of planning. He stole enough to last him for 12 months. One day in July, he felt sure that this year's robbery was going to be as successful as all the others. It so happened that for two weeks, he had been studying a house at Shotover Grange. That particular afternoon, everyone in the family, including the two servants, were away. Horace saw them go and entered the house with his tools carefully packed in a bag on his back. He knew that there were about £15,000 worth of jewels in the Grange safe. And if he sold them one by one, he expected to get at least 5000 out of which he could buy three very interesting books coming up for sale in the autumn. He put on a pair of gloves, took the key and opened the door. He made sure that he did not leave any fingerprints. He addressed the small dog by calling him by his right name and showed him some love. The safe was in the drawing room behind a rather poor painting. Horace carefully arranged his tools. He knew he had four hours before the servants returned. Also, he was aware of the fact that it wouldn't be hard to open the safe. After all, he had lived with locks and safes all his life. So he went into the hall to cut the wires of the burglar alarm. Now, are you wondering how Horace knew all of the details about the house? Well, the credit goes to the owners of the house. You see, a magazine article had described this house giving a plan of all the rooms and a picture of this very room. The writer had even mentioned that the painting hid a safe. Just then, he heard a voice say from the doorway, a voice that said that his hay fever could be cured if he found out what plant gives the disease. The voice also said that Horace could be heard from the top of the house. What do you think? Will Horace's plan backfire? Who's this person who has entered into the house? On that note, we have come to the end of the video. Do look out for more videos where I have many more interesting tales to narrate. Until then, stay good and keep learning. Bye -bye. Tutor Mate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.